So bubble sort is one of the rudimental sorting algorithms. I say rudimental because it's not exactly efficient, but it's definitely one to know. So here's how it works. So we've got an unordered array here, right? And we're gonna use bubble sort to sort this array. So what happens is, is you need to traverse this array. So you need to go through each item in this array. And the way bubble sort works is it compares two values in the array at a time. So it'll compare three and two, then whichever is largest, it will push to the back and have the smallest to the front. So ordering them essentially. And then it will compare the next two and so on and so forth until it reaches the end of the array. Now, if the if the actual array is still not ordered, then what it will do is it will go over the array again and again. So the best way to do this is to show you how this example plays through. So firstly, we compare three and two. Three is obviously greater, so it flips those two. So we have two and three. Then we compare three with four three and four are in order. So we can just add four onto the end of that one. Four and one are compared. One is obviously less than four, so it's not in order. Two, three, one, four. So it flips those two. We compare four and six. Four and six are in order, so we can just add six. And then we compare six and five. Now six and five are not in order, so it ends up being two, three, one, four, five, and six. So that's after the first iteration. Now, as you can see, I can change the color here. As you can see, this is still not in order because we have the one which is out of order. Yeah, So we need to go through this array again. So we compare two and three, those are in order. We compare three and one, that's not in order. So we reallocate one and three's position and three and one's position. And then we compare three and four, four and five, five and six, which are all in order. Now, as you can see again, still not in order because this one still needs to go to the front. So we need to flip the values again. So we need to check this array again. So two and one are compared. One goes in front, two goes there. Then the rest is simply just checking to make sure they're in order. And finally, the array is finished and completely sorted. So in terms of say time complexity and space complexity, time complexity is O N squared, right? And the reason for this is, is because we go through the array once here. So we go for it completely once here. And depending on the worst case scenario, this could be completely reversed. So it could be six, five, four, three, two, one, right? And in that case, we're going to have to go through the array over and over again until it's sorted. So we'll probably have to go through it six times again. So it will be O N squared in the worst case scenario. And in space, here, we are not allocating any extra space throughout this entire algorithm. So that will be O1. So let's dive into the code and see how this is implemented with JavaScript. So as we mentioned in the example, there is going to be the need for a number of loops in this. So we can start by writing the first loop. So i is equal to zero. So we start at position zero. i is less than nums.length minus one, i plus plus. Now the reason we do nums.length minus one is because we do not want to be included in the last value with this loop. If we include the last value, it will return undefined at the end of the loop. So the next for loop, we're gonna have j is equal to zero. j is less than nums dot length. And this is valid because we know that this can go up to the last value and not return undefined. So once we have these double for loops in play, what we can do is we can check nums at j with nums at j plus one um, and check to see whether that's in order. And the way we do that is nums at j. If that is greater than nums at j plus one, what we can do is we can then flip those values. So if the first value is greater than the second value in the two values that are being compared, then we need to flip them to put them in the correct order. Great. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to return nums. Num is not defined and that is right there. Okay, great. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have the array in order. Now, a simple way to optimize this is with this second for loop. If we add minus i here, that'll make the algorithm slightly faster. And the reason for that is is because we know after each iteration of the array that the last value is going to be sorted. So we can just decrement that off the end of this to make it a tiny bit faster. And there you have it, that's bubble sort.
just remember with a bubble sort algorithm, just think of it as two values being compared and then bubbling up or propagating to the end of the array. Um, and then this should come naturally to you.